Let's learn about surrealism. Just like there are a lot of impressionists and cubists and we couldn't talk about them all, I don't have time to talk about all the surrealists. And there's a whole lot of different surrealists and their styles. So I picked out three with different interesting interpretations of surrealism. Jean Moreau, René Magritte, and Salvador Dali. Moreau was born in Barcelona, Spain on April 20th, 1893 to the family of a goldsmith and watchmaker. He began drawing classes at the age of seven, and his father didn't like it. Uh, he went to, uh, on to enroll in an art school in 1907. At his first art show in 1918, people didn't like his art. Uh, it was influenced by the Fauves and the Cubists, so this bright new way of drawing that, again, people at the time, they're always kind of against, the, the critics at the time are always kind of against what new is coming out. Moreau developed his own style and joined the Surrealists in 1924, where his dreamlike interpretations fit right in, and his art uses large fields of color with organic shapes and black lines very often. Uh, he would use a technique called automatic drawing, where the artist moves the pencil at random around the paper, so maybe you close your eyes and you move the pencil around, and uses that as the basis for the artwork. Um, it's fun to play this as a game or just to do it on your own. Rene Magritte was born in Le Seine, Belgium on November 21st, 1898. His father was a tailor and textile merchant, and his mother was a hat maker. He started drawing lessons when he was 12. Magritte uh, started out with an Impressionist style, but then moved on to being influenced by Futurism and Cubism. Throughout the years, Magritte was uh, in the military. He worked in a wallpaper factory, and as a poster designer. Uh, until in 1926, a contract with a gallery in Brussels let him paint full-time. Critics disliked his first exhibition in 1927, which, what else is new? So far, we've learned that a lot of times when a new artist comes out with new styles of art, the critics do not like it. He moved to Paris and became very involved in the Surrealist movement, and he became a leading member of the group. Uh, during World War II, Macrete broke off from the Surrealists and his friends, and after the war, he even turned to creating forgeries. That's fake art pieces copied from famous artists. Uh, Magritte's style is an amazing mix of very realistic painting and impossible situations, like objects floating in the air, like a train or an apple, or the sky being in the wrong place, like inside someone's eye, or on a painting canvas. Lastly, and most famously, Salvador Dali was born in Figuere, Spain on May 11th, 1904. His father was a notary, um, and his father was very strict, but his mother doted on Dali and helped him by encouraging his art. In 1917, when Dali was 13, his father organized and hosted an exhibition of his son's charcoal drawings. Uh, Dali went to art school and was always very eccentric. He liked to stand out, and he wore strange clothes and hairdos. Um, he started to experiment with drawing in the Cubist style that he'd learned about from magazines because there was no Cubists where he lived at the time. Um, Dali was expelled from school, and he went to Paris where he met Pablo Picasso. Dali really admired Picasso, and Picasso had heard from Miro that Dali was a good artist, so Dali became more influenced by Picasso and Miro. He loved mixing classic and new styles, which fit well with surrealism. Dali grew um, a, a crazy mustache, which became his trademark, and so now whenever people think of him, the famous artist Dali, they always think of his very thin, curly mustache. Um, Dolly was a showman and he loved to create a spectacle and made people think about art and really to be confused. Um, his art shows and his outrageous style really showed off this. So surrealists were using the ideas of Sigmund Freud, who, who was a psychoanalyst, who, to create art. And the idea that they were using was this one that your mind has a conscious part, the part of you that thinks and decides what to do, and an unconscious part. So the part of you that's underneath the surface where it doesn't really, it, it like knows when you're hungry, the part of you that, that decides um, to run away if you get scared, the part of you that's hidden under the surface. And so this part's the one that like controls your dreams because you don't have to think about what happens in your dream, it just happens, right? And so the surrealists used games and dreams and practices like this to help them tap into the unconscious part of the brain and they wanted to use that 
on their art to show what your unconscious mind could could make and produce like the strange crazy stuff that happens in your dream um a few words that go with surrealism are juxtaposition juxtaposition is when you have things next to each other that uh contrast each other or you use them to compare to each other so pretty much when you put two elements next to each other to make to show each other off usually it's things that are very different and strange that shouldn't go by each other and then there's also metamorphosis metamorphosis is when one thing turns into another thing i mean it's a word that's used in science too like a a caterpillar metamorphoses into a butterfly so surrealists use um all these things to help them tap into the subconscious and produce dreamlike crazy art and there's lots of different styles it doesn't ha- it could be abstract or it could be very realistic but surrealism's about tapping into an unconscious dream okay guys bye <laughs>